Please note. This movie has taken content from the Zeitgeist film series, Interreflections, and the book, The Zeitgeist Movement Defined, Realizing a New Train of Thought, and that content has been run through ChatGPT and Google Gemini using various prompts. It also contains some original prompts written by me. Zeitgeist music has also been taken and influenced by AIVA.AI, the so-called official Zeitgeist movement, and Peter Joseph's company. Gentle Machine Productions do not own the truth they have presented. The word official is actually strongly related to the word authority, yet truth should be the authority, not any individual or group. To quote the first Zeitgeist film, They must find it difficult, those who have taken authority as the truth, rather than truth as the authority. So this project asks two questions, can AI make a new Zeitgeist film? And is it possible to create a documentary that belongs to regular people who support the unofficial zeitgeist movement that is not under any copyright? Copyright in reality is a form of plagiarism. Someone is plagiarizing reality when something is put under copyright. Our reality has already allowed any combination a human can come up with. So there is no such thing as something original as everything is interconnected. There are only discoveries. There's no such thing as an invention. Reality is at odds with the basis of copyright as humans learn by copying, machines work by copying, and nature works by copying. Without copying, nature would not exist. Copyright presents a hierarchical view of reality just like religion. Yet reality is more like an open source project, where everyone learns together. Copyright is a form of oppression against the poor who wish to have free access to knowledge. The book 1984 by George Orwell explains the danger of intellectual property, where the character Winston Smith is tortured in the Ministry of Love until he accepts the false idea that 2 plus 2 makes 5, since the Ingsoc party owns 2 plus 2 makes 4. Those who burn books will in the end burn people. So enjoy. System Shift, Redesigning Societal Values In our current societal structure driven by trade and profit, there exists an unspoken addiction to monetary gain that disrupts the prospect of fair and equal exchanges. The prevailing global mindset seems steeped in an illusion, valuing superficiality over intellect, prioritizing competition and property ownership over sharing and communal harmony. Instead of embracing sustainable practices and preservation, we endorse wasteful consumption, favoring cost efficiency over technical efficiency. The prevailing energy sources are often unsustainable and polluting, disregarding cleaner, more abundant alternatives. Moreover, the prevalence of conflict and the profiteering from warfare have overshadowed the potential for peaceful collaboration that fosters genuine progress. It's an unfortunate reality we find ourselves in, and perhaps it's time to challenge this fraudulent social paradigm that undermines our collective well-being. In the realm of contemporary psychology, a term often evoked is maladjusted, resonating with frequencies that underscore the pursuit of an idealized state of adjustment. This ubiquitous word, sought after for its promise of averting psychological complexities, propels the desire for a well-adjusted life, steering clear of neurotic and schizophrenic tendencies. Yet, within this narrative of conformity, I find myself compelled to assert that there exist facets of our society and world to which I proudly proclaim my maladjustment. I invite all individuals of goodwill to share in this maladjustment, fostering an unyielding stance until the inherent injustices and deficiencies of our societies are rectified, urging for the realization of a greater good that transcends the confines of societal norms. The essence of genuine discovery and collective progress lies in the freedom to express thoughts openly. In the marketplace of ideas, the freedom to speak and think openly serves as a sieve, letting the kernels of wisdom rise while allowing the weightless husks of flawed concepts to fall by the wayside. Only through this unbridled liberty to vocalize beliefs and challenge perspectives can the truth, 
like a beacon in the dark, emerge from the tumult of dialogue and dissent. Without this liberty, the path to enlightenment remains obscured, and the voyage toward truth becomes a labyrinth without an exit. Each time a word becomes prohibited, you remove a stone from the democratic foundation. Society demonstrates its impotence in the face of a concrete problem by removing words from the language. The book burners have nothing on modern society. The human qualities can be expressed in one word, hypocrisy. We elevate those who say right but mean wrong and mock those who say wrong but mean right. Throughout history, the backdrop of human survival was dominated by the primal forces of nature, a ceaseless battle against the elements and the wild unknown. Yet, as time charted its course, a remarkable transformation took shape. The evolution of civilization and technology conquered many of nature's adversities, granting humanity dominion over its immediate environment. However, an unforeseen shift arose, where once nature posed the gravest threat, the specter of human-created cultures now casts its shadow. The peril of today isn't merely the unrelenting force of nature, but the tangled complexities of our own societal constructs, echoing across the globe. The survival of our species is no longer besieged by the fury of the natural world, but entangled within the intricacies of how we coexist, how we treat one another, and the cultures we've nurtured. The true test of survival has become what we, as a species, are doing to each other within the constructs of our own creation. In the midst of societal decline, art serves as a mirror, reflecting the cracks and decay woven into the fabric of existence. Truthful art, in its raw and unfiltered form, doesn't shy away from showcasing the stark realities of a faltering society. It doesn't sugarcoat or hide the deterioration, instead, it bravely exposes the cracks, the imperfections, and the shadows that haunt the collective conscience. Yet, its responsibility transcends mere reflection, truthful art serves as a catalyst for change. It's not content to passively depict the world's fluctuations, rather, it aspires to be an agent of transformation, igniting conversations, challenging perceptions, and nudging society toward the path of evolution and renewal. Art's solemn duty is not only to depict the change, but to actively participate in the journey of shaping a better tomorrow. This company knew absolutely that they had a problem with the product. They knew that, that it was infected with AIDS. They dumped it because they wanted to turn this disaster into a profit. Do something for yourself. Join the Army Reserve. The Adelaide Casino. Somewhere over the rainbow is right here, and everybody's welcome to a piece of it. Find yourself in church this Sunday. Peter Popoff wants you to receive the miracle spring water to release prosperity in your life. The only question that matters is, are you hot? Nearly $33 trillion. That's what the U.S. national debt was as of early September 2023. Call me now. I'm waiting for you. Call 0055. It reckons there's about $270 billion worth of Australian home loans that are at risk of defaulting or being classified as severely stressed. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Ask the obliging Bank of America for a jar of soothing instant money. M-O-N-E-Y, in the form of a convenient personal loan. What can we do to protect ourselves from robot automation?
And there are claims that America is sponsoring terror attacks in Iran. The allegations come from a militant group's leader who was captured in Iran on Tuesday. He says he met CIA agents in Pakistan who promised to supply arms to his organization. That's a claim that Washington denies. When thinking about society and mental health, there's a curious dynamic at play. It's often perceived as positive when individuals conform or adapt well to societal norms. However, from a different perspective, this conformity might not always align with genuine mental well-being. There seems to be an inherent conflict between fitting into a society's norms and what might be truly healthy for an individual's mental state. It's like a delicate balance where being well-adjusted to societal standards doesn't necessarily equate to being mentally healthy in a society that might not foster genuine well-being for its individuals. The human pursuit of acquisition, driven by the relentless desire for more possessions and material wealth, finds a poignant analogy in the game of Monopoly. The game encapsulates the essence of this pursuit, the unending quest for accumulation, the ruthless tactics employed to gain an upper hand, and the eventual realization that all these acquisitions are ephemeral, destined to return to the box. When you accumulate properties and wealth in the game Monopoly, there is a profound lesson that transcends the confines of a mere board game. Ultimately, everything acquired in the game, no matter how much one amasses, returns to a metaphorical box. There is a futility of an existence solely defined by the acquisition of material possessions. The game, a microcosm of human existence, reflects the societal drive toward accumulation, often leading to a cycle of deception, inequality, and monopoly. In this pursuit, individuals are ensnared in a never-ending quest for more, more wealth, more properties, and more acquisitions, yet these acquisitions fail to fulfill genuine human needs. The accumulation of material possessions becomes a myopic measure of success, and the societal narrative of wealth acquisition overshadows deeper human connections and true fulfillment. The ruthless immersion into the game monopoly, mirroring the societal conditioning to relentlessly pursue wealth, unveils a stark reality. The allure of acquisition promises fulfillment, but as possessions accumulate, the ephemeral nature of materialism becomes apparent. The thrill dissipates, leaving an unsettling void that no amount of acquisitions can satiate. It prompts a crucial question, one that resonates beyond the game board, what truly matters? Beyond the ephemeral thrill of acquisition lies the quest for fulfillment rooted in genuine human connections, meaningful experiences, and a sense of purpose. The pursuit of wealth and possessions, while integral to survival, cannot be the sole measure of a fulfilling existence. Understanding that the acquisition game leads to a finite end prompts reflection on the deeper aspects that enrich the human experience, compassion, empathy, relationships, and contributions to the greater good. In essence, the pursuit of acquisitions may grant temporary satisfaction, but the enduring fulfillment lies in recognizing the transient nature of materialism and seeking meaning beyond the confines of possessions. It's in acknowledging what truly matters, our connections, our values, our contributions, that the pursuit of a fulfilling life finds its purpose. Watch the crazy shit people do for money. Money talks. What's your price? Australia's number one show is back. Seems like your wife got a new job, and her customers pay very well. You 
work away your life, and what does it get you? Smiles and faces? No. You get cash. Cash that can't buy back what the job takes. Not if you rode every seahorse in the world. Dad, why do I have to go to school? So you can get a job. But why do I need a job? So you can earn money. Continue ahead. But why do I need money? To buy the stuff the TV makes us want. But why do I need to buy stuff? Because if you didn't buy stuff, everyone would be out of a job and no one would have any money. Wait, so I have to work for the rest of my life to pay for stuff that I don't want just so everyone else can suffer the same horrible fate as me? Exactly. You just live your life without thinking, don't you? Jacques Fresco's journey from a young rebel refusing to conform to societal norms to a visionary challenging the fundamental structures of society encapsulates a profound narrative of critical thinking, social observation, and a fervent call for change. His defiance of the status quo, rooted in a refusal to blindly conform, laid the groundwork for a lifelong exploration into the flaws inherent in societal constructs. Fresco's refusal to pledge allegiance to the flag, emblematic of his early skepticism, reflected a refusal to accept societal norms without critical examination. His dissent was not merely an act of rebellion, but a testament to his commitment to truth, refusing to subscribe to beliefs without evidence. Retreating into a self-made laboratory, Fresco embarked on a journey of self-education, delving into the realms of science and nature. His realization that the universe adheres to laws governed by science, and the recognition that human society is subject to these laws laid the foundation for his later critiques of societal structures. The turbulent times of the Great Depression and the devastation of World War II served as catalysts for Fresco's awakening. Witnessing the paradox of widespread suffering amid abundant resources and the squandering of human potential in the throes of war fueled his discontent with the established economic and social paradigms. Fresco's keen observations highlighted the absurdity of a system that allowed for such widespread deprivation while resources remained abundant. His astute calculation that the resources and efforts expended in war could have sufficed to meet global human needs showcased the stark inefficiency and irrationality of societal priorities. As he aged, his convictions remained unwavering. His disquietude stemmed from the perpetual waste of finite resources in pursuit of profit, the superficiality of materialistic values, and the grip of monetary powers over supposedly democratic structures. His unwavering call for change, echoing from the past to the present, is a stark reminder of the urgency to reassess and reconstruct societal systems. Fresco's journey embodies a relentless pursuit of truth, a fierce defiance of unjust norms, and a call for a paradigm shift towards a society guided by reason, empathy, and sustainability. His legacy urges us to challenge the entrenched systems that perpetuate inequality, exploitation, and environmental degradation. It prompts a critical evaluation of our societal values and priorities, advocating for a shift from profit-driven economies to systems that prioritize human well-being and the preservation of our planet. In essence, Fresco's impassioned plea resonates through the ages, a resounding call to discard obsolete systems and forge a new path toward a more equitable, sustainable, and humane future. His unwavering conviction that this shit's got to go echoes as a rallying cry for transformative change, inspiring us to confront the shortcomings of our current structures and work toward a world that aligns with the principles of justice, compassion, and ecological stewardship. In the vast tapestry of history, pivotal transformations have often been catalyzed by the resolute determination of a dedicated few. The collective force of a small group of individuals, driven by unwavering commitment and thoughtful action, has proven to be a catalyst for monumental change. Throughout time, these passionate advocates have ignited revolutions, challenged norms, and reshaped the trajectory of societies. Their profound impact echoes the belief that authentic change arises not solely from sheer numbers, 
but from the unwavering dedication and purposeful endeavors of a committed few, standing as a testament to the potential of human determination and unity. Part 1. The Human Being Beyond Nature versus Nurture, Embracing Complexity in Human Behavior The age-old dichotomy between nature and nurture, deeply embedded in scientific discourse, oversimplifies the intricate influences shaping human existence. This stark contrast between genetics as the deterministic root of all causality and the perspective of humans as solely social organisms devoid of biological influence perpetuates a false dichotomy. At its core, this polarized view reduces complex influences, from how a cell manages an energy crisis to shaping an individual's personality, to a simplistic binary framework. However, the reality is far more intricate and interconnected. Understanding biology necessitates acknowledging the profound interplay between genetics and the environment. It's evident that biology cannot be comprehended in isolation from its environmental context, challenging the reductionist views that isolate genetics or societal influences as exclusive determinants of human traits and behavior. The prevailing debate between nature and nurture fails to encapsulate the complexity of human existence, reflecting an oversimplified and flawed perspective. The idea that life is solely driven by DNA, dismissing environmental influences, clashes with the notion that humans are devoid of biological determinism and solely shaped by societal factors. Instead, what emerges is the inextricable link between biology and environment. This interconnectedness underscores the impossibility of isolating biology from its environmental context. Human biology doesn't exist in a vacuum, it's shaped and influenced by myriad environmental factors, underscoring the inadequacy of rigidly subscribing to either deterministic genetic perspectives or solely social influences in understanding the complexity of human biology and behavior. The misconception that human behavior is solely determined by genetics perpetuates a dangerously deterministic view of life, undermining the complexity and fluidity of human nature. This notion reduces behavior to a fixed and unchangeable outcome, anchored in genetic predispositions. It leads to a belief that societal efforts to improve or alter behavior are futile, as these traits are perceived as predestined and impervious to change. However, this deterministic perspective disregards the intricate interplay between genetics and environment, overlooking the profound impact that social, cultural, and environmental factors have on shaping human behavior. This erroneous belief in the genetic determinism of behavior not only oversimplifies the complexity of human nature, but also poses significant dangers by dissuading efforts to address and improve societal issues. It fosters a fatalistic mindset that undermines the potential for societal progress and change, dismissing the influence and adaptability of individuals within their social and environmental contexts. Embracing a more nuanced understanding that acknowledges the multifaceted influences on behavior is crucial in fostering a society that prioritizes meaningful interventions and societal improvements. The prevailing belief that conditions such as ADHD, schizophrenia, and various complex diseases are genetically predetermined is a misconception that disregards the intricate nature of genetic influence on health. Contrary to common perception, most diseases are not genetically determined but rather influenced by a complex interplay of genetic predispositions and environmental factors. While certain conditions may have a genetic component that increases susceptibility, this predisposition doesn't equate to an inevitable outcome. Diseases like heart conditions, cancers, autoimmune disorders, and mental health issues showcase this complexity where genetic predispositions exist but do not serve as absolute determinants of illness. For instance, in breast cancer, only a small fraction of women diagnosed carry the specific breast cancer genes, illustrating that the majority of cases do not have a direct genetic cause. The search for genetic origins of diseases overlooks the nuanced nature of health conditions, leading to misconceptions about genetic determinism. Diseases that are commonly attributed to genetic programming often exhibit multifaceted causative factors beyond genetics. This misconception undermines the crucial role played by environmental influences, lifestyle choices, and other external factors in the development of various health conditions.
understanding that genetics merely contribute to a predisposition rather than solely dictate disease occurrence is pivotal in shaping approaches to healthcare and highlighting the significance of holistic interventions that consider both genetic susceptibility and environmental influences. The complexity of genetic influence on health and behavior. The notion that human behavior is solely dictated by genetic predispositions overlooks the intricate interplay between genes and environmental influences. Genes don't serve as rigid blueprints that unequivocally determine behavior, rather, they offer a spectrum of responses to environmental stimuli. Emerging research suggests that early childhood experiences and the nature of child rearing can significantly impact gene expression, effectively activating or deactivating certain genes. These influences contribute to molding an individual's developmental trajectory, aligning their responses with the demands of their environment. In essence, genes don't predestine behavior, but rather offer varying responses to the environment showcasing the plasticity and adaptability of human nature in response to external factors. The dynamic relationship between genes and the environment challenges the simplistic view that genes solely dictate behavior. Instead, genes provide individuals with different avenues for navigating and responding to their surroundings. Environmental cues and experiences can influence the expression of genes, effectively modifying an individual's developmental path. This realization underscores the complex interplay between genetic predispositions and environmental factors, emphasizing the adaptability and responsiveness of human behavior to the demands of the world in which individuals find themselves. Ultimately, this understanding highlights the multifaceted nature of human behavior, debunking the notion that behavior is rigidly predetermined by genetics and underscoring the role of environment in shaping human responses and actions. The impact of childhood abuse on the brain's genetic makeup highlights the significant role of environmental experiences in shaping genetic expression. A study conducted on suicide victims in Montreal revealed a profound correlation between childhood abuse and genetic alterations within the brain. Autopsies showed distinct genetic changes present in the brains of young adults who had suffered childhood abuse, changes absent in individuals who had not experienced such trauma. This phenomenon illustrates an epigenetic effect, wherein environmental factors, in this case, childhood abuse, trigger alterations in genetic expression. These changes at the genetic level underscore the profound influence of environmental experiences in activating or deactivating specific genes, emphasizing the intricate interplay between external factors and genetic responses within the brain. The study's findings illuminate the dynamic relationship between environmental influences and genetic expression within the brain. The term epigenetic denotes alterations occurring atop the genetic structure, showcasing how environmental factors, such as childhood abuse, can leave a lasting imprint on genetic functioning. The genetic changes observed in individuals who endured childhood abuse exemplify the significant impact of environmental experiences on gene activation or deactivation. This pivotal revelation highlights the capacity of external influences to modify genetic expression within the brain, shedding light on the intricate mechanisms through which environmental factors mold and influence brain function and development. The complex interplay of genes and environment in shaping behavior, beyond biological determinism. The Dunedin study conducted in New Zealand, tracing the lives of several thousand individuals from birth into their 20s, unveiled a nuanced relationship between genetic predisposition and violent behavior. Within this research, scientists identified a genetic mutation associated with a propensity toward violence. However, a critical revelation emerged, this abnormal gene alone did not heighten the likelihood of violent tendencies in individuals. Surprisingly, those carrying this genetic anomaly displayed a lower rate of violence compared to individuals with normal genes when not subjected to severe child abuse. This finding highlights that the presence of the abnormal gene did not independently predispose individuals to violence, rather, the crucial determinant appeared to be the interaction between this genetic factor and experiences of severe childhood abuse. 
The Dunedin Studies revelations underscore the intricate interplay between genetic predisposition and environmental factors, particularly childhood experiences of abuse, in shaping behaviors like violence. It elucidates that while certain genetic mutations may have a relationship with propensities for certain behaviors, the manifestation of these tendencies is contingent upon environmental interactions. The study challenges the oversimplified notion that genes unilaterally dictate behavior, emphasizing instead the pivotal role of environmental factors, especially childhood experiences, in influencing and modulating the expression of genetic predispositions toward violent behavior. Research involving gene manipulation in mice showcases the limitations of perceiving genes as the sole determinants of complex traits such as intelligence. By knocking out a specific gene related to learning and memory in mice, scientists observed a decline in the mice's ability to learn. This finding appeared to suggest a genetic basis for intelligence. However, what often goes unacknowledged is the pivotal role of the environment in influencing genetic outcomes. Subsequent experimentation revealed that genetically impaired mice raised in enriched, stimulating environments exhibited a remarkable reversal of their learning deficit. This critical observation underscores the profound impact of environmental factors in mitigating or even nullifying the effects of genetic impairment, challenging the conventional perception of genes as the exclusive drivers of behavior or traits. The implications of this study extend beyond the simplistic attribution of behaviors solely to genetics. It highlights the intricate interplay between genes and the environment, emphasizing that genetic contributions interact with environmental stimuli in shaping an organism's responses. This dynamic interaction underscores that genes might influence an organism's predisposition or readiness to confront specific environmental challenges rather than determining a fixed outcome. The study underscores the inadequacy of adhering to the outdated notion that behaviors or traits are exclusively governed by genetics, cautioning against the potential dangers of perpetuating such misconceptions, which echo historical contexts like eugenics and oversimplify the complexities of genetic and environmental interactions. Attributing behaviors solely to biology and genetics, while neglecting the influential role of social environments, presents significant dangers in understanding and addressing societal issues. This biological hypothesis, if accepted uncritically, poses considerable risks, fostering a perspective that absolves the responsibility of addressing social conditions that contribute to problematic behaviors. Such a viewpoint might lead to fatalistic conclusions, where individuals are seen as predetermined to exhibit violent tendencies due to their biological disposition. Consequently, this stance could rationalize punitive measures as the sole recourse, disregarding the imperative of altering social environments and the underlying conditions that foster violence. Embracing this perspective potentially overlooks the essentiality of addressing societal factors and dismissing the transformative potential of creating supportive, nurturing environments that mitigate violent predispositions. Relying solely on biological explanations for behaviors, while disregarding the influence of social contexts, can have detrimental consequences in shaping societal responses to problematic behaviors. If the focus remains fixed on genetic predispositions to violence without acknowledging the impact of social environments, it could inadvertently reinforce a mindset that favors punitive measures over proactive social interventions. This reductionist view might lead to fatalistic attitudes, negating the importance of altering societal conditions that contribute to violent behaviors. Neglecting the role of social preconditions in fostering violence could impede efforts aimed at societal reform, ultimately hindering the creation of nurturing, supportive environments that offer alternatives to punitive measures and pave the way for meaningful societal change. The legal and prison systems are often seen as the primary means of addressing crime and antisocial behavior in society. However, these systems often fail to address the root causes of such behavior, leading to a cycle of incarceration and recidivism. Societal efforts often focus on punishments like prisons and police, which are costly. However, addressing poverty, a root cause of crime, is not given enough attention or financial resources. Poverty is a pervasive issue that affects millions of individuals and families worldwide. 
It is characterized by a lack of access to basic necessities such as adequate housing, food, healthcare, and education. Living in poverty often leads to limited opportunities, social isolation, and exposure to criminogenic environments. Research has consistently shown a strong correlation between poverty and crime, as individuals struggling to meet their basic needs may resort to illegal activities as a means of survival or to escape their circumstances. To effectively address crime, it is crucial to recognize the role of poverty and other socioeconomic factors in shaping behavior. Society needs proactive solutions beyond punishment, investing in poverty alleviation, education, healthcare, and community development to address crime's root causes. Laws, often reactive, attempt to solve specific issues, but may miss broader implications or create unintended consequences due to their narrow focus and inability to address complex social problems comprehensively. The genetic fallacy, evading systemic accountability. The tendency to attribute human flaws or societal issues solely to genetics provides a convenient escape from acknowledging the deeper-rooted societal, economic, and historical factors that contribute to problematic behaviors or systemic challenges. This oversimplification often manifests as a belief that any individual dissatisfaction or antisocial conduct stems from inherent genetic flaws rather than examining the broader societal structures. The allure of the genetic argument lies in its capacity to absolve established systems, particularly capitalism, from culpability by redirecting focus onto individual genetic predispositions. This redirection allows the prevailing social, economic, and political systems to persist unchallenged, fostering an environment where systemic flaws evade scrutiny under the guise of inherent individual deficiencies. Contrasting the fallibility ascribed to human beings, the market or capitalism is often idealized as a flawless social system, shielded from critical assessment. The allure of portraying capitalism as an infallible mechanism lies in its capacity to evade scrutiny and sustain its dominant position in societal discourse. This portrayal perpetuates the belief that any dissatisfaction or discord within society is due to individual deficiencies, diverting attention away from the structural inadequacies inherent in the economic and social systems. Consequently, the systemic issues embedded within capitalism remain obscured, allowing the prevailing system to persist unchallenged and absolved from accountability for perpetuating societal challenges. The Paradox of Addiction, Societal Reverence for Destructive Behaviors Addiction, in a broader sense, encompasses any behavior marked by an intense craving, temporary relief, and long-term adverse effects, coupled with a loss of control over the behavior. While conventional notions of addiction often revolve around substances like drugs, the spectrum extends far beyond. Workaholism, compulsive shopping, gambling, excessive internet use, or immersion in video games are among the myriad behavioral addictions prevalent in society. Beyond these, there's the often overlooked addiction to power or acquisition, observed in individuals or corporations perpetually seeking more, irrespective of the detrimental consequences. Strikingly, these socially impactful addictions, causing immense harm, often receive societal endorsement and are regarded as respectable pursuits, despite their catastrophic repercussions. However, the societal perception of addiction and what is deemed respectable is paradoxical. Behaviors leading to widespread social harm, such as the addiction to power, wealth, or profit, often evade significant censure. Executives steering tobacco corporations, thriving on profit despite the fatal consequences of tobacco smoke-related illnesses claiming millions of lives annually, exemplify this dichotomy. Their addiction to profit remains untouched by legal or social consequences, their actions deemed respectable within the corporate landscape. This paradoxical acceptance of destructive addictions, glorifying pursuits that lead to societal harm, highlights a disconcerting reality, where the greater the detriment caused by an addiction, the more socially revered and shielded it tends to be, creating a baffling double standard within society's perception of addiction. Unveiling the multifaceted nature of addiction, beyond inherent qualities and towards understanding susceptibility. There is no war on drugs, because you can't have a war on inanimate objects. 
There is only a war on drug addicts. Which means we are warring on the most abused and vulnerable segments of our society. The prevailing myth surrounding addiction often links the addictive nature solely to substances or specific behaviors. This misconception fuels the approach of the war on drugs, operating under the premise that by cutting off the source of drugs, addiction can be eradicated. However, a broader understanding of addiction defies this notion, indicating that no substance or behavior, in isolation, possesses inherent addictiveness. For instance, not everyone who engages in shopping becomes a shopaholic, and not every individual consuming alcohol will develop alcoholism. Instead, the crux lies in the vulnerability or susceptibility of an individual to the potentially addictive substance or behavior. The fusion of a predisposed individual with a substance or behavior with addictive potential is what facilitates the emergence of addiction, challenging the simplistic view that substances or behaviors themselves are inherently addictive. Therefore, the primary consideration in comprehending addiction rests not on the inherent addictive qualities of substances or behaviors, but on understanding the individual susceptibility factors that pave the way for addiction to take root. It's this intersection between an individual's susceptibility and the potential addictiveness of a substance or behavior that fosters the development of addiction. Addressing addiction comprehensively involves acknowledging the intricate interplay between an individual's predisposition and the environmental elements contributing to addictive behaviors, reframing the narrative from a focus solely on substances to understanding the complex dynamics involved in addiction formation. Understanding the susceptibility to addiction involves delving into the impact of life experiences on an individual's predisposition, contrary to the outdated belief in a solely genetic basis for addiction. Scientifically, the notion that addictions stem primarily from genetic causes lacks credibility. Instead, it's the culmination of life experiences that render individuals susceptible to addictive tendencies. These experiences not only mold an individual's personality and psychological needs, but also intricately shape the very structure of their brains. Remarkably, this process of susceptibility doesn't commence post-birth, but begins during fetal development in utero, emphasizing the profound impact of early environmental factors on an individual's vulnerability to addiction. Studies have underscored the profound effect of prenatal experiences on the predisposition toward addictive traits in individuals. The developmental trajectory isn't solely determined by genetic factors, but is markedly influenced by the environmental factors, particularly the psychological and social milieu in which an individual is nurtured. It's evident that the biology of human beings isn't isolated from their experiences, rather, it's substantially molded and influenced by the life experiences encountered during the crucial stages of prenatal development, emphasizing the critical role of early environmental influences in shaping susceptibility to addiction. Stress breeds addiction, addiction fuels consumption, and consumption drives profits in a market-driven society. It's a vicious cycle perpetuated by profit-seeking corporations at the expense of individual well-being and societal harmony. To break free, we must shift towards a paradigm that values holistic well-being over profit margins.